And good morning, or I should say good afternoon. We are today flying the Hurricane 1A, and this is from the uh, Summer Storms second event that we participated in. I guess guys want to take the airbase first, and that's fine. Okay, a little bit about the aircraft. This was a tr what would be called a transitional aircraft. Uh, inline engines, monoplane, fairly streamlined. And that being said, it used a technique more akin to World War I fighters than World War II. And why would you say that? Well, it comes down to a real simple thing here. That the, um, the way the fuselage is, was built is you get yourself an airframe, uh, literally a frame. You build a bunch of tubes and then you take the various panels and you attach them to the tubes or you stretch fabric over them, both of which were used in this case, and attach them to the frame. And that's not a technique that's used much anymore, except occasional prototypes when you want to throw something together pretty quick. And the reason for that is heavy. And one of the things about aircraft is they are very intolerant of being heavy. I mean, as in, you really don't want anything to do with them being heavy. One good way to guarantee that you don't, um, that it weighs too much, doesn't turn as well, all sorts of things, nasty things happen. Oh man, they were just lined up in a row to kill me. Okay, so... That being said, then why would you do it? Well, that's kind of simple. Uh, you didn't have a lot of uh, technique developed for doing what was called monocoque. Now, I'm throwing terms around that you may not understand. So, what is a monocoque? Uh, that's where you build a very um, a frame that result that you still have a frame, but it's much more lightweight. And that being said. Lovely though that may be, um, what you don't want to get involved in is uh, building tube frame and then stretching stuff over it because you really are building a very heavy frame and then the fabric. Well, the other uh, solution is to build something called monocoque, which is still used to this day, where you get the majority of your strength from the skin itself and then you put some supporting members in it to uh, beef that up. Now you notice I'm getting out of this area because we're wasting time and we need that other rocket base back right now. Um, and that's what you see in the Spitfire. Conversely, this was an easier aircraft to build than the Spitfire. And in this game, it's a 10.2 aircraft before you add any additions to it. In actuality, uh, as the aircraft was first delivered in its fighter variants, it was at least as maneuverable as the Spitfire. Now I have eight rifle caliber machine guns, just as it was in the war. that this gun, uh, guy's guns are extremely effective. Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason is simply no more than no less that I've got Marksman 1 and Marksman 2. Part of the thing with this is you get a um, five-point pilot, and that's my kind of go-to for fighter pilots. Since your whole reason for existence is to 
kill other aircraft, it's hard to do that if you don't get effective fire on the other aircraft. So what you get out of Marksman 1, Marksman 2 for the new people, and we do have new people coming on. I have noticed it for a number of reasons. Um, is the first gives you a 5% reduction in dispersion. What's dispersion? Um, I don't know if any of you hunt or target shoot, uh, but if you have any familiarity with firearms whatsoever, then you know that um, it's very hard to get a bullet to strike in the same place no matter what you're using. There's always some dispersion. Slight changes in temperature, slight changes in barrel heat, slight, slight changes in barrel position can all have a very deleterious effect on accuracy. Um, automatic weapons by their nature are less precise than their uh, counterparts, uh, bolt action counterparts. Things like uh, free floating barrels and will add to accuracy. Things like um, automatic actions that depend a great deal on um, now that's being done by the way don't do that. Free floating uh, barrels tend to add to it um, barrels that count on linkages and what have you such that you always find in automatics means that they never quite made up the same way every time. Now you can do various things to improve that, but you can never quite get away with it. And that being said, you've got to... Um, so that, anyway, long and short of it, it causes dispersion. Well, the greater the dispersion, the less accurate your weapon is, and the less bullets strike where, they're, where you would hope them to be. So you get a 5% reduction in that. And Marksman 2 gives you an additional 5% on that and another 10% in accuracy. They add those together, they're pretty significant. Then you get a sight put together with that and you've actually got something pretty darn handy. Now I've got eight rifle caliber machine guns, but if they're all actually, the majority of your uh, bullets are actually hitting, then you have something worth talking about. So when you see a hurricane fighting a BF-109, you're actually seeing uh, a real gender or generational gap. Gender gap. Yeah. Okay. Heard me say it before if you watch the channel for any time at all, but be aware that if you ignore ground attack aircraft, you're going to lose. This is why I go after them so ferociously. I don't have to worry about him anymore.
flag just does not want to be caught, does he? So we got one medal, which is the uh, Corhiza dub. And it's for destroying five aircraft in the combat group after the arrival of the Squall Line and surviving to the end of the battle. Came in number one, but was on the defeated side. Well, you can only do so much. Got a token out of the deal. Always welcome. <clears throat> and starting towards a special configuration because it isn't a premium aircraft. A summary here is uh, yeah. Pretty good gold, silver, I should say. And yeah, they don't give you doubloons. <laughs> okay, well, you can't blame them for that. And the other guy in a hurricane got a nice, uh, did better than I did. Probably why they won the game. All right. Then there's a whole bunch of numbers. All right, so the aircraft is. In the, uh, your 10.2 turning circle is pretty good. I've got this down to 10, which is better than good, but still not in turn and burn category. Excuse me. I've been talking to 10 minutes, 15 minutes straight. You get a little dry. Okay. Uh, that being said, um, armament's more than effective. <clears throat> Here's a pilot setup, which is Marksman 1, 5% reduction in dispersion, Marksman 2, which is uh, increases accurate uh, dispersion, uh, reduces another 5%, and accuracy by 10%, as described earlier. Let's talk about what I've done to the aircraft so far. Uh, it has, each one's been enhanced once, which is all you can do until you get your specialist configuration without it reducing. I could calibrate it some, but, you know, enough's enough. The, um, so I've got an 8% uh, firing accuracy and another 5% chance of uh, inflicting critical damage. Uh, we got 6.5% to roll maneuverability and 1.6 to maneuverability in turns. And then we got the lightweight engine. Let's see, there's an, I'm sorry, 3% uh, resistance to critical damage, which is nice. And then we got uh, the yaw maneuverability in the lightweight improved power unit uh, is a plus 3.5 to yaw and another 1.6 to maneuverability. Of course, all those count up. Now, if you want to continue on the turn and burn track, which is, you know, you have to choose that or you have to choose. You could go another route here, and what you would do is you could come up here to polish skin, which will make you faster. And then you can come here and change this out for uprated engine, which will again make you faster. Also, on pilot skills, uh, other choices you c I could have made, and you'll decide them for yourself. Increases maneuverability by 2% in all axis which is awfully nice. And you can come down further. Um, let's see here. No, I think that's about it. Okay, so if you add this, uh, you're doing pretty darn well. 
if you want still more additional speed you can come down here for an additional three points um, there's what I'm looking at and you get uh, Increases your view range by 20% and your engine and thrust by another 3%, and that's fairly major. Okay, so you start adding that up to the deal here. You can go to Engine Guru 1 and then Engine Guru 2 for another 5% of engine power and thrust. Uh, increases thrust and top speed by 2%, and here you get the engine thrust by 3%, and these things start adding up. Okay. So you can end up one, with one very quick uh, hurricane. But I didn't want to do that because I had severe doubts that it's altitude performance and sure enough it can't get over 3,000 feet without going yellow which means about 5,000, 6,000 feet uh, you're still going to be practical but after that it's going to start getting rough. Okay. Uh, service ceiling at 9,514 feet. So it's going to tell you just about the time your engine is going to say, ah, oh, heck with you. You know, you might be in the air, but you're not going to be doing too much except being a standing target. Um, so, there you go, and that was the reason for it. So, if you're not going to be up there uh, fighting with the fast turn and burn, or with the fast boom and zooms, then where you want to be at is to be able to compete more effectively with the uh, turn and burns. Now, there are things out there like the Hayabusa, it comes quickly to mind, which are, you're not going to outmaneuver. The Zeros, you're not going to outmaneuver. The Spitfires, you're not going to outmaneuver them. Not with this 10 second turn time. Um, okay. But you've got a better chance with it. You usually have better speed, and you almost certainly have better firepower than most of them. Especially with the pop -it ads I've done here. Nothing was lasting that long under the guns. So that's the way I'm going with this, and that's the rationale. As always, if you have disagreements or you got different proposals, um, by all means, feel free to uh, comment. I actually look forward to that. Heck, if I think it's a good idea, I'll try them and credit you. Okay? There's no not invented here syndrome here because there's just too many things I learn on a daily basis flying this game. So you're most welcome to. At this point, I'm going to uh, wrap this up. I want to thank you very much for uh, watching the video, and would you please uh, subscribe? And if you want to support the channel, uh, go to the channel itself and hit uh, on the about, and you'll find a Patreon button there. And you can actually um, donate a buck a month if you want to. You're under uh, no obligation to do so, by the way. But it does help me buy premium planes to show you. I'm not going to come out of pocket and buy premium uh, planes out of my own pocket for the channel. Okay, I hope you can understand. Okay, so that being said, I do thank you. I uh, appreciate you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow.